there are so many things that I wish I had known before I started running and I've learned the slow, hard way and I don't want them to go to waste. So today, I'm gonna to share those with you guys. I'm gonna start with those that surprised me the most, but also had the biggest impact on my enjoyment of running. It's okay to walk. Yes, you can still call it a run, even if you broke into a walk at some point. And this one's taken me a long time to get my head around, because as a child, it was drummed into me that if I walked on a run, that was a failure, whether that was a cross-country race or it was a hard training session. And it wasn't until I started to become more of a pro athlete and taking my running more seriously that I realized you actually did run sessions that involved a walk recovery. So it's entirely normal to actually use walking to help with your run training. And then it was uh, another step, which I think was the real breakthrough for me when it came to doing triathlon and endurance running, when my coach suggested that I should walk through the aid stations. And I was like, what, a half marathon? I should be walking in the race. And that was a really weird concept and it really came to the fore when I was racing in Hawaii and actually was told to walk up one of the hills. And it made such a difference to my race and it meant that I was much stronger and overtook people afterwards. So my point being, it's entirely fine to walk, whether it's for a training purpose or a racing purpose. So you can still call it a run, but just make sure that you can enjoy walking and you still get the same benefit. Running is an easy sport to do. I mean, the preparation is purely putting on your trainers, getting changed and heading out of the door. And compare that to swimming. You've got to drive to the pool, you've got to sign in, pay, get changed. And afterwards, you've got to try and get rid of that smell of chlorine and then drive home again. And running takes half of that time. In actual fact, I find that a 30 minute run, I can get a lot more out of than I could a 30 minute cycle or a 30 minute swim. In actual fact, you can get a decent run workout in your lunch break. Endorphins, this is the main reason that I run. Just, you get that wonderful natural high afterwards. And if you're watching this and you're new to running, then the initial struggle might still be slightly masking that wonderful feel good sensation. But trust me, stick with it and you'll be amazed at how quickly you get slightly addicted. years ago someone tried to tell me that running could be social I would have just laughed at them and told them they're mad but now I'm, I think pretty much 50% of my runs count as social runs and I'm quite happy to swap sitting in a cafe drinking a coffee chatting to a friend for actually going out for a lunchtime jog and catching up that way it just gets a little bit quieter on the uphills but all seriousness running with a buddy makes such a difference and if you are looking to find someone to run with then I'd suggest maybe trying your local Facebook groups maybe contacting a running club and there'll be a lot of people at all speeds so you'll find someone to see you or even chatting to your local run shop because they tend to know the local running community and whatever pace you're at you'll be able to find someone who I'm sure is also looking for a run buddy. I mean, this ties in with the time efficient and the social aspect too, but say you're away visiting somewhere and you, you can simply put your trainers on and head out and explore by foot whilst also getting your daily dose of exercise, which is a perfect combo. And then we've got the weather. Yes, sorry, I'm British, I have to mention it, but weather can affect our motivation and running is probably the least affected of all of the sports. If you think it's a cold, wet, windy day, realistically, you're not gonna get too cold on a 30 minute run. Compare that to cycling and the amount of time you're gonna have to spend putting on loads of layers if it's really cold, or the amount of cleaning you're gonna have to do to your bike if you've been out in the wet. Yes, running wins. Running apps perfect for sightseeing. If you're in a new town or you're somewhere traveling and you want to see where it's safe to run or popular to run, you can look at heat maps to find where a lot of runners go. You can also then simply plan a new route. And I must admit, I don't know why I've taken so long to get on board with this, but I've recently been using Komoot and I found new routes even close to home and it's just sort of opened up a whole new dimension when it comes to my running. Then of course there's the whole world of Strava, which is basically a social media for running. So you can share your runs to like other people's and also to actually track your progress. And beyond that, there's apps or uh, websites that can give you some great free training plans, such as the Couch to 5K. It's a really popular one at the moment and it'll give you that nice structure to follow and that guidance and also help with motivation. And if you're maybe beyond the 5K, there's plenty of other plans out there right up through to marathon training. A 
anyone, yes, anyone can run. But have you ever heard people say, oh, he or she looks, looks like a runner? Yes, I have, and I've never been told I look like a runner, but I am. And that's the thing about running, anyone can do it. It doesn't matter what background you come from, your age, your size, what sex you are. It's open to all of us. And again, pace is what I want to come back to. I mentioned it earlier with walking, but it doesn't matter what pace you run at, you're still a runner. And if you're really unsure, then check out our video. You know you're a runner when, and I'm pretty certain you will be a runner. As sport goes, running is one of the cheapest. You don't need any fancy equipment. You don't even need a sport specific watch. You can simply have a pair of shorts or leggings and a top and a pair of running specific shoes. Yes, I do hear you saying trainers aren't necessarily cheap, but it is worth investing in a pair that are running specific. They don't need to be high end, but they just need to be able to give your foot the protection and the support that it needs, which will in turn give you hours of enjoyment from running. Running seems to have some magical effect of suppressing my appetite. And as a young swimmer, I was always ravenous. I mean, luckily I was swimming twice a day, so it didn't matter. But now as a more casual and older athlete, I quite enjoy the fact that running doesn't leave me quite so hungry. And as a result, running's actually a great sport for weight loss, if that's obviously one of your goals. And whilst we're talking about food, admittedly, I don't have enough time to go into detail on how to fuel for your run, but it is a good idea to wait a few hours, two to three hours, after having a proper meal before going for a run or 30 to 60 minutes after you've had a snack. Oh, how wise I sound, although it has taken me many years of running to learn all of those points. And hopefully there's a few that you weren't on top of which you can now learn from. And if there are any that I haven't mentioned that you wish you'd know when you started running, please share those in the comment section below for us all to benefit from. And if you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. Please give us a like and do check out all of our social media channels and you can follow those as well.